Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps lots. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are after market close on Tuesday, April 19th. We're going to take a look at SoFi today. Um, SoFi had a pretty decent day today, up almost 4%, peeling back a bit in the after hours. I think a lot of the market is getting Netflix crashed again. If you remember, it happened once already this year um, <laughs> where Netflix crashed. And, and uh, I think on that same day, the market had a really rough day uh the 21st of january what was sofi doing the 21st of january um but in any case this yeah 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 a, a big red day on that day um i thought i remembered most of the you know a bunch of the market also uh dumping on that day I could be misremembering but uh in any case we may have to be dealing with that some more uh tomorrow we'll see oh yeah spy down almost two so i'm sure the queues the queues were down quite a bit in any case came in to talk about sofi and then just realized that that was happening again and um but to catch up on on you know where sofi is uh you know this is our our daily candlestick chart and we'll zoom into the 10 minutes here uh in a moment but just to sort of you know set the bearings we're, we're wrestling right now with this like 739 zone that i had put in or level there's like a zone to 777 there which you see um so there's a pretty tight end zone that i'm looking to see you know what it's going to do in terms of it's, it's wrestling with it at this point is basically all that's happening um as you can imagine everything is is pretty um like underwater in terms of EMAs and MAs, which we've talked about before. Um, the MACD does continue to creep up here. So it's something to maybe keep an eye on. It's curling a little bit here, but I mean, you see there was a bullish cross over here and it just, the steam uh, steams out very quickly and, um, and just, you know, continues to leg down. We need to get a nice consolidation in like we saw here. To at least like be able to catch some sort of level break so it looks like it might be wanting to curl a little bit which is better than this sort of like um sort of ping pong off the bottom right and, and just immediate reversal and then flag and then fake out and and uh sell off and so i'm hoping that we can start to get a curl like we started to see these curls here right like this has always been the motion that has served um so far better in recovery phases um you start to see i mean this one is a is quite choppy and ping pongy um but this was leading up to the actual like closing of the merger and, and all that jazz so um you know those are folks just getting out not knowing what was going to happen with the merger probably and then you know the ipoe uh explosion um if i'm catching all these dates right I, someone will will get all bent out of shape in the comments if I have it wrong, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but in any case, we had this long sell-off here. Again, if I'm recalling my dates correctly here, uh, lock-up sell-off, and then, you know, finally started to get some some scooping here, and then got that nice second attempt at 25, the first one being over here. I guess before that, we, we kind of did, but um, this to me was sort of the real move. In any case, that scooping action to me, uh, you know, after the merger was complete and all that jazz has been the one to really look for. And, you know, we had maybe a little bit of an opportunity there if it, if it had kept up, but it didn't. Um, and so I'm looking to see, we need to get like three solid bottoms in three little, little swing bottoms in, um, that start curling us back up for me to feel like there's potential for reversal, uh, in, in any like near term and even then like I don't know that may mean it's a reversal to that 850 level and then it rejects off of that again right it definitely may not mean that we're getting to double digits anytime soon and I oh, sorry I should also address this people have been you know going off on Twitter and in the comments and stuff about how how can you not be scooping up shares at this price you know it's so undervalued like based on what the company is and so on and so forth I do think 
I, I have hope, as you know, folks who've been watching for a while know that SoFi could have a really interesting future. And yeah, maybe we look down the road in five years, 10 years, whatever, we're like, wow, we were dumb for not putting our whole portfolio into SoFi at seven bucks, right? Maybe. Um, but there's also a time cost, right? There's an opportunity cost that you're exposed to here, which is um, for all the time that, that your portfolio is just getting eaten away and eaten away and eaten away by, you know, um, <laughs> continuously getting cut by 20% or 30% or 50% or who knows how, how cut a lot of people are at this point. Um, you know, you could be in something that's actually making money. So it's huge opportunity costs for, for as long as this goes on, right? And at this point, the last time that we had any sort of like real strong run um, was at the end of 2021. And even then, not, not the very end, right? The very end, we're getting like back down here into the mid-teens. So like November of last year. And so it's a long time to tab your money for like six months or so. And again, sure, maybe you'll look like a genius in five or 10 years um, if this explodes and like they're able to execute and, and you know, on, on this grand vision that they have for what the company could be. But you know, there's a lot of uh, riches to rags stories too. And so, and so um, just like you wouldn't necessarily tell everyone to drop out of college because Zuckerberg did, and you know, it'll definitely work out for you because look, uh, you know, Steve Jobs did it and and he was rich and famous and same thing with Marcus. I mean, those are like little capsules in time, right? That certain people embody. Similarly, like folks who were scooping up Amazon when it was low and wasn't really moving, you know, yeah. These are great stories to have at the end of the day, but um, there's real-time realities that you have to deal with too. And, and so I'm starting to think along the lines of the opportunity cost that SoFi is is sort of pushing onto, to, onto my portfolio at this moment and um, wanting to, to sort of really consider whether that's the smartest thing to do. And as you may know, I was wheeling SoFi for a while. Um, but it, even the wheel has become pretty like unsubstantial because when the price of the stock gets so low, the premiums you're collecting are so low that you can't really mitigate your your price or your initial cost basis in, in a meaningful way anymore. Um, and at some point, it just feels like, wow, it's just tying up a lot of my money. And maybe I'll do what I would do with any other stock and just wait for it to start to uh, show real signs of recovery and get some tailwinds, which probably will require the entire market to get some tailwinds. And, and those two things can maybe kind of ride together for a while. So I know this is like really soapboxy chat and not the chart, but we talked a lot about the chart and not a lot has changed. So I just wanted to say that out there, you know, I'm going to be keeping my eye on a stop loss. I don't know what, what it is exactly yet. I'm, I'm, I have a little bit more work to do, a little bit more digesting to do before I make that decision. Um, but it would just be in an effort to free up capital, get into plays that are moving, plays that are winning, um, rebuild the portfolio from the losses that SoFi has um, you know, brought to it, and then just re-enter SoFi when it seems to make more sense. So again, I haven't done that yet, but I just want to put it out there that that's currently on my radar. Um, you see, we're down almost one and a half percent at the moment, um, but for most of the day, SoFi, you know, rose up to the 739 and immediately started struggling with it, confirmed it, had a nice attempt at 750, um, shed off of that for the rest of the day and then try to settle itself back at the 739, though it's, you know, it maybe giving that up after hours. I don't know if this has anything to do with SoFi um, or if it's just having to do with Netflix <laughs> and, you know, pressures that that's putting on all of tech um, or all of the market. But to me, if, if, if Netflix uh, doesn't bring everything down, 739, it's putting up a nice fight with that. Uh, intraday today. So I was getting kind of interested, okay, maybe I don't have to get all doom and gloom and, and sort of like start eyeing my stop loss. But, um, you know, we'll have to see everything is still looking a little bit like on edge to me. And uh, it's pretty hard to trust anything at, at this time. And we, we see what's happened to many, many, many other SPACs. Um, and again, this isn't me saying that I think so by the company is like those other SPACs, but um, I'm dealing with holding the stock, right? Like, like other folks are. So that's the, 
the context in which I'm viewing it. So sorry if you weren't in the mood for a real sort of soapboxy kind of narrative video today. Um, I didn't start the video thinking it was going to exactly go that way, but there wasn't a whole lot other to talk, other things to talk about on the trend and on the chart that we haven't gone into a bunch last week and the week before. So the levels to me are still holding up 739, still the most interesting. Um, and below that, we need to keep seeing what we do as we wrestle with this $7 level if it comes down to there again. If not, of course, bullish hope is 777 test, reclaim, and then make a strong effort at 850. That could be some nice run room. If it can actually get in that in that space, it might have nice room to run between you know high sevens and 850, which isn't uh, a tiny percentage change anymore since the stock price is so low. All right, folks, I hope that your trading week is off to a good start this week. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.